This StarCast show, just like all of our StarCast shows, are available at adfreeshows.com. So let's, uh, let's take everybody back a couple of years to the ECW era. So you guys in 97, you wrestle for the first time. I think it's a house show in Massachusetts. And then... I don't remember. <laughs> all right, well, I'm telling you it's a house... I do remember one thing, though. Okay. Uh, the first time we wrestled, and I, I th- Al, Al had to be there, I think, Al Snow, and, uh, and it, you know, like I said earlier, you Rob... Huh? You need water? No, or what do you want? Oh, it's down there. But uh, I said earlier, you and I played rough, you know? And uh, for a while there, it seemed like either one of us or both of us would be hard weighed, you know, by my bony elbow or something like that. But the first time I wrestled Rob, I come back to the curtain, and I think I had a bloody nose. I had blood coming out of the side of my mouth. I had blood coming out of my shoulder. And my head is kind of stuck sideways like this. And I come through the curtain, and Al looks at me and goes, what happened to you? You look like you've been through a war. And I, I looked at Al, and I go... It's not supposed to be like this. <laughs> so um, the feud really sparks. There's a match in Philadelphia. It's the TV taping. And you, you guys have this incredible match. And the, the urban legend is Paul Heyman had set things up where you were kind of just going to beat Jerry. And it was about a spotlight for you. And you kind of changed everything, and you made it more competitive because you felt there was more you could do with Jerry, and you wanted to bring Jerry up a little bit. Talk a little bit about like what Paul Heyman expected out of that rivalry when it first started, and and why you were like, we can do more than just make it about me. I mean, I can't really tell you what's on anybody else's mind. It's just like you said that day before the match, Paul and Sabu both. You know, Sabu is my mentor. And back then, anything he said was gold to me. I just did whatever he said, you know. So he said, uh, you know, hey, these guys are the shits. They were the shits. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, how, that's how it was. So, Jerry, you were the shits. No. no. I hope uh, not, because I had worked Sabu in Japan before. That's right. true. But he, did, but he did, Sabu did say, you, you know, you're up here, and you're, you know, you're going this way, and Jerry's down here. It shouldn't be more than, like, eight minutes or something. And um, Paul said something similar to that, and I was like, uh, you know, I think, I think, you know, we can, I think we can really have a good match, you know. And I and I had the freedom to uh, to go as long as I wanted, you know. I've, I mentioned in other interviews, a lot of people, uh, it's easy for them to notice the difference between ECW RVD and WWE RVD because they say, well, you know, you used to have the chair and do hardcore moves. Yeah, but from my perspective, the biggest difference you wouldn't even think about as a fan, um, in ECW, I never, ever had uh, time restrictions, ever. It was, there was never like, it was never like, uh, I need you to go, you know, 12 minutes or I need you to go 15. It was like, and it's not like everybody had that freedom, you know, right. but it was, yeah. And it was like, uh, people had the opportunity usually to try to top me, and then I would go out there and try to have the best match afterwards. But um, with, with WWE, it's all about time. If you go out there on TV, you know you've got six minutes. You know that your entrance is going to take a minute. Your opponent's going to start in the ring, so now you got five. You know that two minutes into it, you're cutting to a commercial. You know when you're on commercial. You know it's you know you got one minute You know until you're going home, and you know that fucking so-and-so is going to run down here and... Uh, interrupt your match so they can put over their mats because that's what they do and (laughs) 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 but wait but with ecw there was only one time it was like at the very end on the pay-per-view where paul was like how much time do you think you need and i had no idea and he never asked us i know i had no idea i I think it was it might have been on the tnn thing but i think it was on the pay-per-view and we were wrestling and paul was like i mean just give me an idea i'm like paul (laughs) (laughs) I'm not, I'm not even out there yet. How am I going to know? Because that's what, like, Sabu used to say when they, they try and always get info. And we come from a different time, you know, protecting the business, which they don't do anymore. But uh, they used to come up to Sabu and try and, you know, like, uh, try and get some, hey, is there anything, you know, the camera guys need to know? Like, are you going to are you gonna go out on this side and all whatever? And Sabu will go, I'm not in the ring yet. How do I know what I'm going to do? You know? And, <laughs> So that's, that's how the I, that's, way it used yeah. to be, though. Yeah, yeah. You just went out there and felt yeah. the crowd and 
did whatever. But with WWE, your job is all about the time, and so you know, you know exactly when seven minutes is oh. up. Like boom. TV is a whole different world because, like you said, when you're going to commercial, there ain't no waiting for you to get a spot in. It's like you're going. Biggest difference at, from the agenda of being the worker from the two companies. So from that first match in Philadelphia on that t televised, there's an immediate chemistry between you guys. There's no real way to define why two performers have chemistry. But if you guys had to sit down and figure out why you were able to click the way that you did, why was it? Like, is, is there a secret sauce in there somewhere? Or is it just two guys with great talents just happen to intersect at the right moment? For me, I felt like we both wanted to give the fans something they'd never seen before. Plus, I felt like we both wanted to make it more fun and challenging for ourselves at the same time. That's the way I felt about it anyway. Yeah, I mean, it definitely got to, to be driven by that. You know, the fact that we were having these matches, people were talking about it, and, and it knowing that we were going to be wrestling again, you know, we would try and outdo every match. We were so in the competitive mindset that you have to be in when you're, you know, when you're in the business and you're, you know, trying to steal the spotlight and stuff. Um, I, I think it was just kind of organic. Like, I knew that he had, um, I knew that he was physically talented. Uh, I have good matches, you know, with, with pretty much everybody. And sometimes it's all like their ideas. Sometimes, you know, like they come up with it. They got a bunch of stuff in their head and it's like, all right, I know you've been jerking off to thinking of working with me. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what's in your mind. They go, no, no, whatever you want, whatever you want. J just tell me, dude. I know you got something. No, what do you want to do? And then after a while, they go, hey, would it be cool if we do this? And, you know, I got to pull it out of them. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's, it's whatever. Um, with Jerry, one thing that was cool was that he had his, um, his, his um, personal rules you know your your own his policy of what he believed and he was he was he was he fought with that and was stubborn with that and that in that no in a good way though i think that's that's actually what made it better because i would i might say something like um dude you know what it'd be cool if i jump up on the guardrail and like do a crisscross thing go over and kick and then he would be like and he would come up and he'd be like oh if we do that we have to do this first and then it makes sense because we do that you know and that's one thing I always tried to do with whoever I was working with. If they came up with something that, and I, I don't want to say it in a bad way, but if it didn't make sense that it could actually realistically happen that way, I'd try and tweak a little. And I wouldn't just say, no, your idea sucks, we're not going to do it. I'd always try and explain why and how we could, and how it would make a little more sense. Does that makes so, sense? Yeah, it was a lot of give and take. Yeah. It really yeah. was. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.